Today, we are going to cover everything you could possibly want to know about Beckett Simonon shoes. Everything from the materials out of which they are made to the intricacies of their design. What flaws do they have? What are their best qualities? And lastly, though most importantly, are they worth your money? And before we jump in, I have to tell you, I did get these shoes for free. And if you order any Beckett Simonon products through my affiliate link, Dresswell gets a small commission at no extra cost to you. I am not here to tell you to buy Beckett Simonon products. That is your decision to make, not mine. I am just here to inform. However, if you choose to do so and use my affiliate link, thank you. It supports the work I do here to create these free comprehensive resources for everyone. Let's get started with materials and construction. Now, all Beckett Simonon products are Blake stitch construction, and that includes the Dean Oxfords here. Fundamentally, what this means is that the two primary components of the shoe, the uppers, the sort of top half, and the outsole, the bottom half, are connected through just one primary stitch. That's this stitch right here. You can see running through the entire shoe up through the insole. Moving on, we have the laces. These are very standard dark brown waxed cotton round laces. And you'll notice the shoe itself here comes with these metal eyelets that will just help the durability and longevity of the shoe. And then the upper leather. When assessing the quality of leather, I think about it in two distinct categories. The first is cleanliness. How does the shoe visually look? Does it have any defects? And I think of this in three different grades, low, mid, and high. These shoes have mid-grade leather. They do have defects. We'll talk about them later in the imperfection section. And then the second category is softness. Now, Beckett Simonon does market heavily that their shoes have no break-in period due to using very soft leather. And that is, in my experience, true. My Cohen loafers are about as comfortable now as they were the day I opened them up. And that is very comfortable. I wear them every day. Now, going over the rest of the materials, we're gonna start at the bottom here with the top lift. This is SBR rubber. That is a synthetic rubber. It's got a nice cross grain pattern, which will just help a little more with traction. Then moving up, we have the heel stack layers. These are full vegetable tan layers. Now that is pretty surprising actually at this price. I would fully expect leather board or even a synthetic material. Then moving up a layer, we have the outsole. This is a full vegetable tan outsole. It has an open channel and you can see the open channel is milled very well. It's very deep and that threading, the sole stitch that holds the whole shoe together is placed well within it which will provide it that extra protection. Then moving up again, you have a midsole here, which is a leather midsole. Then moving up again to the outside, we have this 360 degree welt. Now this is a fake welt. This is primarily decorative, though it does functionally serve to protect the seam between the outsole and upper from penetration of any environmental water, oils, or salts that would cause deterioration from the inside. And then moving up again a layer, you have a thicker fiberboard layer to provide a little more structure, a little more height to the shoe, as well as act as a basin for our next layer, which is the steel shank. Now the shank in the shoe provides a little more support so that this arch here doesn't collapse over time. Typically at this price, I would really expect to see something synthetic or maybe a cheap thin wood. Moving up again, you have this white layer here. This is the insole. This is Salpa. Salpa is a type of leatherboard created using natural latex as its binder. At this price, you would typically expect a lower grade compressed cardboard or even fully synthetic insole. Then moving up again, you have a sort of EVA foam pour on material just to provide a little more cushion. And then lastly, on top of all of that, we have this leather sock liner. This will provide just a tiny bit more padding and protection, but more importantly, it'll help provide a barrier so that when water, if it does ever wick up through that sole stitch, it won't immediately contact your foot. Now we are going to move up to the upper lining. Now this is Vaquetta leather. Vaquetta leather is widely considered to be untreated dual tan leather. It is leather that has not been rolled in a drum to provide any kind of finish, which is why it has that natural golden hue. And it is tanned twice. First, it is vegetable tan to provide that hue, and then it is tanned a second time to create that ultra supple velvety quality it is so well known for. Now let's take a look at this suede heel counter here. So this is a piece of Vaquetta leather turned inside out, so the suede portion is on the back 
it helps provide a little more grip for your heel when it's in the shoe. But more importantly, it's just a really nice sign of craftsmanship. And then moving right behind that, we have the structural heel counter. This just provides a little more structure to the heel, a little more shape. This is Celastic. Now, Celastic is essentially a fiber plastic blend. And then moving up, we have the French binding. It provides a little more structure to the top line of the shoe as well as providing a nice delicate aesthetic finish to that overall edge. And then moving to the toe cap, you can see internally we have Celastic here as well. That's pretty standard. So that's what these shoes are made of, but a dress shoe would not be a dress shoe if not for how it looks. So let's take a look at every minute detail of design to see if these shoes truly hold up to aesthetic scrutiny. Starting off, let's talk about the last. Now this is a true American last. It is straightforward, basic, agreeable. It won't draw attention, but it will impress when noticed. Now last design is somewhat subjective. It is the artful sculptural quality of a shoe. Though there are a few objective hallmarks we can look for when we are assessing the quality. So the first is asymmetry. You wanna see a shoe that is asymmetrical because that matches the shape of your foot. These shoes don't have that much asymmetry. Again, they are a pretty basic last. The next is complex curvature. Does this shoe have a lot of very interesting curves and swoops and angles going on the shoe? It doesn't really. It falls flat where the upper meets the welt it doesn't really have much of a curve coming down the side of the shoe, but it does have a couple things going for it. One is the toe. It does have this particular drop here, this angle you can see right at the front of the toe. That is uh, very much a sign of quality and something you see on higher end shoes. It just provides a little sophisticated break to the shoe as well as a nice surface when the shoe is shined for light to reflect off of it. And then also the heel, which is probably the most impressive part of this last. This has a beautiful, curved heel you want a nice bulbous shape again that's reflective of your foot but also adds this lovely sculptural aesthetic roundness to it you want to see a nice curve where the vamp comes up to the instep you can see you kind of have that here with beckett simnon but it's disrupted a bit by this bump here at the top of the vamp, just a little bit of a bulging out. Now moving on to overall stitching quality and cleanliness. Now, these are all very nice. That's a very tight dual parallel stitch on the vamp, on the toe cap. They're very uniform and there's really no loose threads I can find anywhere on the shoe. And then we have the patina. I hate to sound like I'm selling you guys these shoes, but this was probably what impressed me most when I first bought my Cohen loafers. These have a lovely brown patina on the toe, on the rear. It's wonderfully done. It's very smoothly and evenly blended. Now moving on to the stitch density. These have a stitch density on the uppers of 12 stitches per inch. For reference, in the $300 range for shoes, you'd typically expect to see between eight and 12. On the welt, you have a stitch density of five. In the $300 range, you'd usually see something between four and six. And then this welt is also fudged. So you can see these indentations here are the welt fudging. And now moving on to the joinery. So starting off, we're gonna look at the welt joint. The welt wraps around and connects to itself. I like to test these joints actually just by using my fingernail and seeing if I can catch them. In this one, it's totally fractured. However, when we move to the sole edge, you can see it is absolutely perfectly flush. I can't catch my fingernail on it going up or down. And then on the heel, you have the heel stack layers. And similarly, I can't at all catch my fingernail. And these are also finished with a nice sort of semi-gloss burnishing, which I quite like. The next note is the closeness of the heel block to the uppers. You want to see a heel block extend no further than the upper itself to help give the shoe a sort of lift. And then also on the heel, you have this decorative wheeling, nice touch to what would otherwise be a plain surface. And then moving down to the bottom of the heel stack, you have these decorative brass nails here. They do help hold the heel together a little bit, but mainly they're just there for decoration. And then here you have this edge here, this little cut corner, that's called the gentleman's notch. It's just another sign of craftsmanship and attention to detail. And then the waist width. So this has a width of two and a half inches. That is usually what you'd expect in the three to $400 range. And then moving up the side of the waist, you have the beveled waist, which is where the sole edge goes from being square into being rounded. And that again, is just an aesthetic sort of touch of craftsmanship. And then lastly, the backstay. So this 
backstay or backstrip here. It's really well done on this shoe. And what I like about the backstrip is that it has this roundness here, this concavity, which is sort of reflected in the convex roundness of the heel itself. So there's a nice sort of aesthetic duality going on there. But even for how good Beckett Simonon is, they're not perfect. So let's take a look at some of those imperfections. Starting with the left shoe, there's some dye on the beveled waist. You can see glue where the sock liner is adhered. Ideally, you wouldn't be able to see that. The stamp on the sole is slightly faded at the corner, and there is a small scuff on the sole edge near the toe. On the right shoe, the color has been stripped slightly on the French binding. There are these small specks on the toe cap. It's Actually really hard to see. I'm not sure if I can pick it up on the camera. There's a little bit of fraying on the welt stitching. And then there's kind of this scuffed bit or where there was some excess glue where the heel meets the outsole. And then this dye stain on the vamp on the exterior. And then again, a small dye stain on the sole edge. Now moving on to imperfections both shoes share. Both come with a slight roughness on the sole. There's a loose thread on the lining stitching inside the shoe. Where the vamp is stitched to the facing, there's kind of this lack of finish or perhaps it's some glue stretching up, just leaving a little bit of an unsightly surface. And the right shoe's heel block is just ever so slightly darker than the left's. And then there's some slight bleeding of the dye from the sole edge onto the sole bottom. And then lastly, the overall leather quality. Roughly, these shoes will come with some micro creasing. You can definitely see it here. You'll definitely see inconsistent pore structure. These are all things that you might not even notice, but if anyone notices it, it'll be you and you alone. So I think for $200, this is all pretty reasonable, right? These are not perfect shoes. They're also not $2,000, which is what you would pay for perfect shoes.